realagriculture.com presents farming forward sharpen your soil health expertise with cover cropping nitrogen management and advanced grazing brought to you by the farm resilience mentorship program Farmers across Canada are looking for ways to be innovative when it comes to nutrient management. One of the strategies that some farmers are engaging in is cover crops. Today we're outside of Minn, Saskatchewan, and we're talking to Derek and Tennis Axton of Axton Farms. They've been using cover crops for a number of years on a certain amount of their acres, and they have found some real benefits. Soil health, water retention capacity. At the same time, they're also able to lower some of their input costs. Let's go find out how. Probably the thing that really turned me on the most to cover crops was sort of the idea that we can improve the resource in a lot less time than we originally thought we could, basically. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Gabe Brown in 2010 for the first time and got invited to his farm. And, and I mean, everybody's seen the video where he shows you the soil and you walk across the dirt road. And it is, I stood there, I've been to his farm multiple times, and the difference between those soils was management. And, you know, we're definitely not there, but just the idea that we can do that and you know, when I looked at sort of the variables between what he was doing, I mean, cover crops was a big part of his operation in some form, you know, whether it be a grazing or not a grazing, but we just tried, and I sort of made the mistake of coming home and trying to duplicate what Gabe Brown was doing, which I now caution people to, you know, take, take principles and not specifics when you go to visit farms. And cause everything changes every 50 miles, it seems like. So that was kind of the the thing behind it so we we started 2012 i think was that we see our first multi-species mix and we've learned that those don't fit us as well as they fit other farms um, we've kind of honed down we generally grow you know single species or two species things that we can control weeds i guess is we, we still have weeds on our farm and we like to be able to control those um, and that's part of why we do that but we have found you know that we've have found noticeable uptick in lots of things you know soil aggregation even simple things as color change those are probably the biggest things we've noticed you know obviously the ability to reduce inputs or is sort of the after effect of that but and that's most of that comes from well managed and well planned fall seeded covers if we can get on soon enough i mean and not every fall every year you know and not every field but we, we definitely try to pick our battles when we've learned this the hard way it's not every, you know, not every fall has enough moisture. And we've, we've done that and we've been stubborn and tried to grow them when there's no rain and there's no rain in the forecast. You know, hope doesn't make it germinate. No, so basically what we do is we try to pick a field that, you know, is it's looking poor. You know, it just looks like it's struggling. You know, you do everything the same, but one field is just not, not producing the same. So we'll make sure those are ones that we'll usually pull out and put into more of a full season yeah. cover crop. Um, but any cover crops we do, whether it's a fall seeded, we're really looking to see what does this field need? You know, are we trying to, you know, has there been a pulse and we really need to have ground cover out there? Or are we looking yeah. to have something that's going to have a deeper root and get more nutrient cycling or get through some compaction? So every year is different just trying to decide what does the soil need and what can we do to help it out? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the practicality of it. That all makes sense. We're, we're improving soil health. We're limiting our, our need for reducing our need or reliance on inputs. What does it look like? Uh, what, what crops typically are you coming out of that you're going into a cover crop? Like, t talk about the practicality of it, what it really looks like on the farm. So generally, um, you know, things like lentils or peas, things that are off early, uh, no fall cereals. If, if we have them, we don't have any this year. Um, our camelina is really short season, so that's the ones that have the big windows in the fall. And generally those ones that don't have a lot of residue. I mean, one of the things we're trying to do is keep the soil covered. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's a challenge, um, especially in dry years where you don't grow a lot of biomass. But we know we do everything we can to, you know, actually it's the big, like the overarching goals of the whole thing are improve water holding capacity and infiltration. Cause in Minton, Saskatchewan, our number one limiting, you know, variable is wa is moisture. Yeah. So that's the thing we really try to focus on. And so with that, it comes, you know, if we're coming off a of lentil stubble, we'll do oats and peas or something simple, you know, something low cost because it can't be expensive because it doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're going to do it on a certain, you know, a 
quite a few acres, then it, you, it, you gotta keep your cost down. You know, relatively low seating rates. We're gonna experiment this fall with broadcasting some raw. We bought a new fancy European spin spreader with the idea that we can go on our trams and, and broadcast this stuff at 120 feet. You know, because rye kind of works actually in a broadcast scenario where nothing else we found really works. We have to drill it, everything else, which takes time and money and people at harvest, which is complicated. So it doesn't, you know. Um, when, when do you remove them? Well, it depends. I guess that's the, is the is the easy answer. <laughs> um, most of the things we grow are stuff that just winter terminates, and then we have a neighbor um, who's just moving cows right across the creek there now that brings cows. They have a tremendous amount of, I don't know, a lot of cows. Yeah. You just said you know here in Minton, Saskatchewan, the big limiting factor is <laughs> water. Yeah, yeah. You're you're going to harvest a crop, and then you're going to plant another crop in the fall. That's gonna germinate. It's and you, gonna grow, so it's taking up moisture. One hundred percent. Yeah. But what we found is is that a fall seeded cover crop. I have never seen a fall seeded cover crop hurt or compete with the yield in the following crop. Overwintering cover crops are a completely different animal. Yeah, well, I think of it more like kind of an investment in our soil, um, because you know, as your cash crop is terminated and there's nothing growing there, at least the cover crop is giving you some live roots. It's feeding your soil biology. You've got nutrient cycling. You know, it's keeping the keeping a lot of life going on there, and then creating that soil and the aggregation and whatnot, so that when you do get the winter moisture, hopefully, then you're able to retain it more. So maybe it's even more of a gain, even though it's using some moisture, it's building a structure to be able to retain it for the spring. Talk about how cover crops fit into the fertility plan, because you you mentioned reduction in input so we, we got to dive into that what what exactly does that mean well we gosh um it's sort of a combination of like cover crops and then the intercropping are kind of what the things that gave us sort of the maybe um confidence i guess is what we're looking for to start you know fooling around with the idea of, of using less nitrogen and um we probably had a lot of luck the first few years, but the, the intercrop seemed to work with, you know, we were applying just sort of like our starter FOSS or whatever back then, and um, a little bit of sulfur maybe, but now it's it's sort of evolved into, uh, we just use like our, whatever our starter mix is now, which is kind of a homemade liquid thing. Um, and then uh, a little bit of ammonium sulfate, which we only use in our cereals and, and our, our intercrops, we just don't apply. There's enough sulfur goes in, um, with our cereal crops and then it's sort of enough for the intercrop the following year and that's kind of our fertility program. We use plant sap analysis. Um, we used to use Nova Crop Control in the Netherlands but we found a lab in the States now we use. But we've been using plant sap analysis for seven years which we monitor all of them, you know, all the majors and all the micros and that's kind of what helps us build our spring blend. But we're not seeing any kind of deficiencies and I can gladly show you the, like it's, I guess what we found to be the biggest surprise was is that nitrogen isn't as important as we thought on our farm. It's strangely enough. You know, if with things, other things are in place, nitrogen isn't the centerpiece of our fertility plan anymore, I guess, which is good. Um, and we continue to monitor yearly, and, and that might change. I mean, we just, we just pulled a bunch of plant samples yesterday and sent away, and we, this is a year-on-year -year thing, and we use, we use the data from this year to help build our fertility program for next year and just know know what your goal is and then do trials yeah you know you don't have to start large i mean it can be it can be five acres it can it doesn't have to be a lot i mean just and then you'll see does that do we see results from that next year or, or you know or maybe try that same five acres two or three in that in the same area and see yeah, if you do see time, improvement you know because depending on the year things don't happen overnight none of these things are magic bullets they're all just tools and it's a matter of how you select those tools for your farm and how they fit and what kind of outcomes you're looking for but you know, I, I like for simple things. It's like I like to keep it simple. You know, chances are you can use stuff that's in your bins. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything exotic to start with. It's just a matter of having something live growing out there. It's amazing, like the differences that we we've, we've saw. And then take the time to inspect and monitor. You know, because it's the, the the results above ground might not be, but it's surprising sometimes when you put a shovel in the soil what the difference is where you grew the cover crop and what it is beside it. You know, that's that's probably where we see the biggest change. A big part of the success of cover crops is in being organized. Like it's just like, you know, it's just like those guys who are organized for seeding and in and out and done. It's just like that. I mean, it's a matter of having another person 
to run a drill or two people to run drills when in in the fall but we've even done it like you know you get those tough mornings so you can't you can't combine and the guys go and harvest or go service combines and whatever and then some a couple of guys jump in drills and go, you go see and you can get, get quite a bit done in four hours in the morning if you just because it's not you're not doing the whole farm we're not doing the whole farm you know we sort of focus on those areas we can yeah how, so what percentage of the acres are you doing them it's actually it varies a every year and the plan changes every year this year we're a little bit lower well i mean in the fall you know yeah. i think the most we've ever got done is probably 60 or 70 percent you know and that's all that takes a lot of work and i wouldn't even recommend even you know if we can get 30 or 40 percent of the fields covered sort of thing um which would be like you know it yeah, three or four thousand too. acres this fall i can see yeah. you know we can that's that's realistic because basically once we get to i don't know the middle of september yeah. the 20th of september we pretty much pull our horns in and yeah. that's kind of it because there's just not enough daylight left you know it's been a learning experience we have we have made the mistakes and done too many acres and not got rain and um yeah you, you can't show mother nature no. uh, you know showing her you're not going to win so we just try to play along and if the conditions exist we'll do quite a bit and if, if there's good moisture in the fall we will do quite a bit again and if we can get cows on it good and if we can't it's not the end of the world if you enjoyed this video and want to continue to sharpen your soil health expertise, encourage you to go to farmlearninghub.ca to learn more.